Hey guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to another video for continuous integration, development and deployment with Azure DevOps. And in this video, we are going to talk about Azure DevOps pipeline agents in more details. Azure DevOps pipeline agents. So to build your code or deploy your software using Azure pipelines, you need to at least have one agent. And if you add more code or people within your organization, you eventually need more agents. And that's exactly the same concept of agents like Jenkins agent or Team City agent, like other CI CD agent that we have seen in our organization that we have worked before. So this is the same concept in Azure as well. So the agent is typically an installable software which can either be available within your machine, which is called as a self-hosted agent, or a cloud hosted agent is called as Microsoft hosted agent, or it can be a container agent, which can be a container on Microsoft Azure portal. So again, don't confuse with the Microsoft Azure portal with the Azure DevOps portal, because they are completely two different things. So you can see you can have three flavors of agent. One is self hosted agent. Another one is the Microsoft hosted agent and another one is the containers on Microsoft Azure agent, which is the container agent. So Microsoft cloud hosted agent is one thing which is very, very interesting. And that makes the Azure DevOps very, very interesting altogether. If your pipelines are in Azure pipeline, then you have got a convenient option to run your job using Microsoft hosted agent. With Microsoft hosted agent, maintenance and upgrade of the agents are taken care for you by Microsoft itself. So each time you run a pipeline, you get a fresh virtual machine and the virtual machine is discarded after one use. And Microsoft hosted agents can run jobs directly on the virtual machine or even in a container. So you can have this Microsoft cloud hosted agent within your project for building and also for deploying your application much, much easily. And that's the power of this Microsoft cloud hosted agent itself. So you can use this Microsoft cloud hosted agent to build your application in build pipeline and deploy your application in release pipeline much, much easily. So the Microsoft cloud hosted agent will also provide these flavors of virtual machine images for us, such as Mac OS 10.13, 1.4, 1.5, and you've been through versions like 16 and 18, and then Visual Studio 2015 combo with Windows 2012 RC2, and Visual Studio 2017 with, with Win 2016, Win 18.03, and then Windows 2019. So these are the different flavors of virtual machine images that you get while you want to run your application using the Microsoft Cloud Hosted Agent, which is pretty cool. So basically, Every time you choose this agent in the Azure pipelines, then a new virtual machine will be spawned for you, will be allocated for you, and it executes the whole code for you there, like building it or deploying the application, and then it will be discarded once the job is done. And if you think, what is the actual configuration of the Microsoft Cloud Hosted Agent, then it provides at least 10 GB of storage for you, for your source code, as well as for the build output and it provides a free tier, something like this, like public project, it gives you 10 free Microsoft hosted parallel job that can run for up to 360 minutes or like six hours each time with no overall time limit per month. And for a private project, it will be just one free parallel job that can run for up to 60 minutes each time until you have used 1800 minutes or like 30 hours per month. So, which is very, very cool as well. So you cannot have parallel job execution with a private project, but if you have a public project, you can use like 10 free Microsoft hosted parallel jobs, same time. And if you're gonna use the private project, then you can only use one free parallel job for only 30 hours, but you can request for additional capacity per parallel job by just calling the support team, but you need to pay for that. So basically this Microsoft cloud hosted agent runs on the Microsoft Azure general purpose virtual machine standard DS2 v2. So that is the plan which it runs, but you cannot improve that because that's the actual limitation there. Or maybe you can call Microsoft team to increase that, but the better option is to go with the self hosted agent for that case. So the self hosted agents is again, the next option that you need to choose with. 
So an agent that you can set up and manage on your own to run the job is a self-hosted agent. So you can use self-hosted agent in Azure Pipeline or Team Foundation Server. So a self-hosted agent gives you more control to install dependent software needed for your builds and deployment. And also the machine level catch and configuration persist from run to run which can also boost the speed and that's the power of the self-hosted agent itself. And again this was the only agent which was available until the team foundation server era but once the name changed and once Microsoft Azure kicks in the Microsoft cloud host and agent kind of very very prevalent and everybody is using that. And again since these agents are going to be installed in your local machine these agents can be installed in either Windows operating system or Mac operating system or Linux operating system or even within a Docker container. And if you think about the capabilities of these self-hosted agents it's completely up to you. So every self-hosted agent has a set of capability that indicates what it can do and the capabilities are name value pair or either automatically discovered by the agent software in which case they are called system capabilities or in those that you define in which case they are called user capabilities. So this can be two way as well. So you can define your own capability or the user capability for the agent or by default agent detects its capability by itself and it is called as the system capabilities. And the agent software automatically determines various system capabilities such as the name of the machine, type of the operating system and the versions of certain softwares installed on the machine. Also the environment variable defined in the machine automatically appears in the list of the system capabilities. Well as I said if you want to manage a set of agents, let's say you have an agent which is sitting in Windows and you have an agent running on Ubuntu or in Mac operating system, you certainly require something called as pool and they are called as agent pools. So instead of managing each agent individually, you organize the agent into agent pools. In Azure pipelines, pools are scoped to the entire organization. So you can share the agent machines across the project as well. In Azure DevOps Server, agent pools are scoped to the entire server so you can share the agent machine across the project as well as the collections. And again, we already created the Azure DevOps project which is nothing but the Udemy course project within the organization and this pool can be shared within different project within the same organization which is pretty awesome because that's when you get the benefit of sharing the execution among different organizations of different project using the same pool. So when you configure an agent it is registered with a single pool and when you create a pipeline you can specify which pool the pipeline uses. And again when we talk about the pools the self-hosted agent versus the managed agent defines the pools itself. So if you go to the project settings of your Azure DevOps, you can see by default the self-hosted agent will be sitting in the default pool whereas the Azure Pipelines hosted pool is something which the Microsoft hosted agent sits. Something like Windows, Linux and Mac OS images. So the complete list of images is also available and their installed software is also available in that particular page. Well, as I said, there is something called as deployments group. Again, the deployment groups is something that we will be discussing while discussing about the release pipeline of this course. But again, the deployment groups is something that you need to be aware of as well. So a deployment groups is a logical set of deployment target machines that have agent installed on each one. And the deployment group represents the physical environment. For example, dev, test, UAT, and production. In effect, a deployment group is just another group of agents much like the agent pool but it has a lot of differences. So what difference that this deployment group makes compared to the agent pools? It specifies the security context and the runtime target for the agents. As you create a deployment group you add user and give them appropriate permission to administer, manage, view and use the group. So it lets you view logs for each server as deployment takes place and download the log for all the server to track your de deployments down to individual machines. And it also enables your machine tags to limit the deployment to specific target server. So you can also tag machines such as like test machine or development machine or maybe 
the staging machine and you can specify in which machine you need to perform the deployment instead of deploying in all the machines so that is something you can group using this deployment group just very very good while you work with so these are the whole details about agents within Azure DevOps and how you use the agent in a more efficient manner we'll discuss about the agents in more detailed way like how to install the self-hosted agent and how to use the Microsoft hosted agent while building our application in the build pipeline. Thank you.